Hello and welcome back everyone. Today what we are going to discuss is about the Ashrikia coli that is one of the most important and most encountered species as human pathogen. First we will go through its morphology and history. So it was discovered by Ashrik in 1885. It is also called coliform bacilli and it has a variant that is called thermotolerant E. coli. This variant can survive up to 44 degrees Celsius and this variant indicates the recent contamination of drinking water with animal or human feces. Next thing that we are going to study is about its morphology. As you can see here is the diagram of Ashrikia coli given. This diagram is made by red color that indicates that it is a gram negative bacilli. Ne uh, next thing is that a capsule is present that is surrounding the body of the bacilli. It means that Ashrikia coli is uh, possess capsule. Next thing is that you can see that uh, flagella is present uh, around the whole body. So it contains peritrichous flagella and uh, as the fimbria is present so the Ishrikia coli is fimbriated. Next we are going to discuss about is the virulence factor. Virulence factor include two things. First is antigenic structure of Ishrikia coli. Next thing is toxins. So first we will go through the antigenic structure. E. coli possesses four surface antigens. First is somatic that is also called O antigen. Next is flagellar or H antigen. Another one is fimbrial antigen and last is capsular that is also called K antigen. Now we will go through them one by one. Okay first we will discuss about the somatic O antigen. It is also called uh, lipopolysaccharide antigen or it is it contains lipopolysaccharide okay next thing is that it is heat stable and it shows endotoxic activity now what does it mean by endotoxic activity this somatic O antigen will protect the bacteria from phagocytosis and bactericidal effects that is given by our complement system on the host uh, sorry on the bacteria. So this somatic O antigen will protect the bacteria from phagocytosis as well as from the complement system of host. Next we have is the flagellar that is H antigen. It is heat labile and this antigen helps in the mortality of the bacteria and also contribute in the virulence factor. Next is Fimbrial antigen that is F antigen. This antigen helps in the attachment and colonization of the bacteria. This fimbrial antigen contains uh, various antigens that are CFA that is colonization factor antigen. Next is mannose resistant fimbriae. This mannose resistant fimbriae helps in the colonization onto the uroepithelial cells. Last one is P. fimbriae. This P. fimbriae binds specifically to the P blood group of uh, human RBC. Okay. And also this P. fimbriae helps the bacteria to bind with uroepithelial cells. And the last one we have is the capsular or K antigen. This antigen helps in inhibiting the phagocytosis. Thus protect the bacteria from the host immune system. Okay, next we have toxins. It pro uh, produces four type of toxins. First is enterotoxin, second is hemolysin, third is cytotoxic necrotizing factor force and secreted autotransporter toxin and the last one is cytophores. These cytophores help in iron uptake. Iron is one of the requirement of bacteria. I, bacteria requires iron for its growth, for its development. So what does it do? It takes the iron from the host body with the help of cytophores. Next is cytotoxic necrotizing factor first and secreted autotransporter toxin that is also called SAT. 
these toxins are cytotoxic to bladder and kidney cell it means that if a bacteria produces this toxin this toxin will damage the bladder and kidney cells next we have hemolysis the uh, procedure of hemolysis is still unclear but it is supposed that pyelonephritis strain possesses the hemolysis toxin e coli is divided into different strains according to what it causes in the host body like if it is causing diarrhea then it is called diarrheic strain in this way it is divided into several strains we will discuss about these strains in detail for the first we will focus on only toxins and this entero last is entero toxin it is mostly possessed by diarrhean diarrheic strains and this entero toxin is divided into three type first is heat stable toxin next is heat labile toxin and last one is virocytotoxin now we will discuss about the heat labile toxin so heat labile toxin it has two fragments that is a and b it has two fragments a and b now what is the mechanism of heat labile toxin this lt toxin that is heat labile toxin will bind to the ganglioside receptor that is gm1 receptor of the that is present on the epithelial cell of human intestine okay this will uh, this lt will bind to the ganglioside receptor and the a fragment when it binds to this receptor a fragment will internalize and cleave into two parts that is a1 and a2 from which a1 is the active component what this a1 do it will go inside the cell and it will increase the activity of adenylate cyclase that will increase the accumulation of amp that is cyclic adenosine monophosphate this increase or uh, this increase in the accumulation of amp leads to the increase outflow of water and electrolytes this will ultimately lead to diarrhea this is the mechanism in which heat labile toxin work next thing is that this heat labile toxin is possessed by an enterotoxigenic e coli next thing is that it is plasmid coded uh, now last thing is that how we can detect this heat labile toxin so it can be detected in two ways that is in vivo and in vitro in vivo uh, in in vivo rabbit ileal loop test is positive after 18 hours and in vitro we can use tissue culture test and akin test last thing is serology Uh, in the serology we can use elisa etc next we will go through the heat stable toxins heat stable toxins for uh, it is divided into two parts that is st1 and st2 okay st1 and st2 so now we will discuss its mechanism of action st1 will bind to the guanylate cyclase c that is a receptor present on the epithelial cells of the human intestine this st uh, first will lead to the increase in production of cgmp that is cyclic guanosine monophosphate after binding it will increase the production of cgmp that will lead to the accumulation of fluid and ultimately this will result in the diarrhea next is st second it also causes fluid mechanism fluid accumulation but the mechanism like how it binds where it binds to what receptor it binds it is still unclear so we don't know the mechanism of st second next thing is that this heat stable toxin is possessed by enterotoxigenic e coli it is also plasmid uh, plasmid coded next thing is that uh, how we can detect the heat stable toxin it can be detected in vivo and in vitro etc uh, serology is same for both heat labile and heat stable toxin and the last toxin that we have is the virocytotoxin it is called virocytotoxin because it is cytotoxic to virocell lines 
Next thing is that it is divided into two parts or two types that is STX1 and STX2. It has two fragments, fragment A and fragment B. Now we will go through the mechanism of action. Fragment B will bind to the global triocell ceramide receptor that is GB3 receptor and what will it do? Uh, it will अब क्या करेगा ये जो फ्रेगमेंट ए होता है उसको सेल के अंदर भेज देगा वट इट विल डू इट विल पुट द फ्रेगमेंट ए इन टू दी सेल एंड फ्रेगमेंट ए इज द एक्टिव फ्रेगमेंट एंड इट विल इनहिबिट द प्रोटीन सिंथेसिस इन दिस वे इट विल डिस्ट्रॉय अवर सेल्स इपिथीलियल सेल्स वट इट विल डू इट इज एक्टिव फ्रेगमेंट एंड इट विल इनहिबिट द प्रोटीन सिंथेसिस अल्टीमेटली लेट्स टू द डेथ ऑफ सेल Next thing is that they are bacteriophage coded. They are not plasmid coded. They are bacteriophage coded, and reduction is made serologically. Okay, this is the end of our this video. Thank you. We will discuss its culture media and laboratory diagnosis and all the clinical symptoms in our next video. Thank you.